Hey everybody, today I will be showing off the new Vision Tech R9 390. Now what you get from Vision Tech is, of course, the GPU, quick installation, power adapter, and your install disk. However, if you're like me, you I just download the most up-to-date ones. Now we see here, it does come with the back panel over the board. Heat, see the heat spreading. Dual fan setup. And when you look right here, there's actually your uh, memory modules. You can see that it comes with little heat spreaders in each one something that even let's see here's my 290 this is my 290 by Asus here and here when you see the memory modules they do not a lot of companies actually start getting away from doing that that's a nice little feature that they put on the vision techs here you can see that has a six and an eight power connector You have a little heat spreaders down there that you can see more of the memory heat spreaders along here. And something that I like that they did, not everyone does this. You can see where the fan is, and the GPU is actually offset over here. That's done intentionally by a few companies because most of your uh, airway is from, as you know, the blades of the fan. A lot of companies like to stick the GPU directly under the center of the fan, and that's actually not all that well because the GPU is not in the line of direct airflow. So what they did was they purposely stuck it off. You can actually see where the tubing goes in off to the side here. Let me see if I can angle that a little bit better. So the GPU is here along the main air path help with the cooling a little bit. They stuck plenty of copper tubing in there for the heat piping. Let's go ahead and uh, throw this bad boy in, see what she can do. Okay, before we jump into the benchmarking, I just wanted to get into some card specifications here. The card on the left is last gen's uh, 290X. The one on the right is the Vision Tech 390. Now, the 290X use a Hawaii XT processor, while the 390 uses a Fiji Pro. Both are sitting at 28 nanometers. The clock speed on the two is, the 290 is sitting at 1050 megahertz, while the Fiji is sitting at 1000. Now, where the 390 really comes into play is on its memory. As you'll see on a lot of the newer gen cards, its memory is the key on them. The 290 has 4 gigabytes of video RAM, while the 390 is gifted with 8 gigabytes of video RAM. The clock speed on the 290X was sitting at 1350, while the new 390 is sitting at 1500. The 290X is running at 5 gigabytes per second with a bandwidth of 320, where the new 390 is running at 6 gigabytes per second with a bandwidth of 384. And you really see that come into play with the DirectX 12 benchmark. Now I did four tests to figure out what this card could do compared to my old one. I ran 3D Mark's Fire Strike with the default settings. I ran Heaven with max settings. I also ran Valley with uh, max settings as well on both cards. And this was to test out the DirectX 11. Now to test out the DirectX 12, I ran Ashes of Singularity. And this is where we really see the power of the 390. Also some information on the computer running these tests. The processor is a FX9370, it's running at 4.9 gigahertz. The memory is 16 gigabytes of AMD Gamer Edition set at 2400 in dual channel. The motherboard is a Crosshair Formula Z power supply is an RM1000 by Corsair. 
The cooler on the CPU is a Corsair H105 liquid loop. Now on to the benchmarking. The uh, DirectX 11 didn't see a huge difference. Uh, I mean, there's certainly an improvement. We're with uh, the 3D Mark with Firestrike. We saw a GPU score of 12,283 for the 290. The uh, 390 had a GPU score of 12,509. Heaven had a average frame rate of 55.6 with a score of 1403. The 390 had a score of 59.0 with a score of 1465. Valley had an average frame rate of 57.5 with an average score of 2404 on the 290X, while the 390 had an average frame rate of 64.2 with a score of 2610. Now, where we really see the jump with the 390, and it's a big one. With the DirectX 12 applications and the new memory requirements of the games coming out here being 4 to 8 gigs recommended with pretty much most of the new ones coming out. The 290X on Ashes of Singularity, it only was hitting an average frame rate of 29.1 and what the game calls average CPU frame rate of 29.2. The last gen 290s get blown out of the water. The 390 was hitting an average frame rate of 68 and an average CPU frame rate of 85.2. Same settings, same computer, same benchmark. More than double the difference simply by moving up a generation on the cards. This probably has to do with a big part of the memory being the eight gigs. Games like uh, the new Fallout, Battlefront, and Ashes of Singularity, they have a recommended video card of equivalent of a 390, simply because of the memory bandwidth and the amount of uh, memory. And here we can see a huge difference. I mean, more than double the frame rate, almost triple the average CPU frame rate. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a clear winner with upcoming games, what cards you should probably go with. Even if you crossfire the 290, you're probably not going to be seeing this on the newer style. I mean, yeah, sure, it's going to be close, it's going to be playable, and you can certainly make it look good by crossfiring, or, you know, just knocking down the settings some on the last gen cards. But memory performance wise, the 390 is a clear winner. All right, guys, well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, please drop a like. I will be doing more videos like this in the future, so if you could, please subscribe. It certainly helps us out, and I'll see you guys in the next video.